Sentry now has logs. You can now capture and aggregate logs alongside errors in your applications, then search and query them to better diagnose issues. Let's take a look at how we can use logs in Sentry to help identify real issues in our Laravel PHP app. Here is our application, a simple online sticker store we built with the Laravel React Starter Kit. You can add and remove items to your cart, add coupon codes, and check out. But there's an issue with the cart page. We created a coupon code earlier for one of our beta testers, and they're reporting back that it didn't work. Let's see how logs can help us figure out what's going on. When we open up our Sentry issue feed, we see no issues reported in the back end. That's interesting and makes finding our problem a little bit more difficult. Whatever's happening, our Laravel backend isn't currently treating the situation as an error. Let's enable logs on Sentry and have the user try again and see if we can't get a better idea of what's going on. When using Laravel with Blade templates, you can configure your app on Sentry as a single project. However, because we are using the React Starter Kit with Inertia, the ideal way to treat these is as two separate projects on Sentry. On the React front end, we'll make sure to have logs enabled. And we'll add the console logging integration to send all console.log events to Sentry. For Laravel, we'll add Sentry as a log channel in the config forward slash logging.php file. Then, in our .env file, we want to make sure that log underscore channel is set to stack, which tells Laravel that we want to send our logs to multiple destinations at once. This is the default though, so if you don't see it, that's fine too. And we'll set log underscore stack to single comma Sentry underscore logs, which will retain your local log files as well as send a report to Sentry. Finally, we'll add Sentry underscore enable underscore logs equals true to enable the logging in the Sentry Laravel SDK. Now we can use Laravel's log facade as usual and receive our logs on Sentry. Now we'll wait a moment for our user to try entering the coupon again while we head back over to Sentry. If I go over to the logs tab, you can see a history of the latest logs that came in. I can already see some yellow indicators telling us that we have some warnings that came in. First, I'm gonna dial in to just the last hour of logs. I can see there are a number of warning logs and I'm gonna start my search there by querying our logs and filtering down to the severity level of warn. Lastly, we know which user wrote in and is experiencing the error, and in our logs, we have included the user's ID as additional data we can query. So let's also filter on our custom attribute, user underscore ID. And this user's ID just so happens to be guest. Your user's ID is probably a number. Now we can see several entries where our user tried to enter a coupon code, but we log these attempts in Laravel as the coupon being empty. That makes sense. If a user were to enter an empty coupon string, we could correctly return that the coupon is invalid and not throw an error. From here, we can dive into the trace and we have multiple tools and methods for diving deeper into this issue. We can see in the trace the flow from the user navigating to the cart page, clicking apply on the coupon button, and then ultimately throwing an error in the front end that says, please enter a valid coupon. Now the user claims they entered the code that we gave them. So let's just see if we can go one step further and validate that. If we click on the logs tab from here, we can see every log associated with this trace, including the front end logs. You can see we prepared to debug this earlier by logging the value we ultimately send to the back end. And indeed, it appears to be empty. Finally, as a last check, we can check the session replay to view a recreation of what was rendered on the user's device. User input fields are obscured, but we can see the user has entered some value into the coupon field. Now we can be pretty sure where we need to look to fix our error, which appears to be with our front end checkout page. Of course, if we wanted to save some time, we could just have Sentry fix the issue for us with Seer. Seer is an AI agent with context on all of your errors, stack traces, logs, events, and more that can use all of that data to automatically debug the root cause of the issue. And not just notify you when new issues come in, but automatically open up a pull request with a fix. Go check out logs now available on Sentry. Next up, click over here near my face somewhere to learn more about Seer. Links to everything will be in the description. I'll see you next time. Bye.